If he is the most merciful and the most kind, then why does he allow such atrocities to take place? It's a question that has lingered within me too for a time. So here is me attempting to make sense of this profoundly complex question. The true, correct answer, of course, being known only to Allah. This world, this dunya, is but a test. A place of trials and tribulations with little to no justice. A world of cruelty and suffering, pain and death. But also a world of life, birth and kindness. A world of the ugly, violence and war. But also a world of beauty and peace, of tranquility. This world encompasses both good and bad. And in most cases, one outweighs the other, and it might seem unfair. But this is not all our existences. This world is but a mere blink of our entire existence. A simple second in an infinite existence beyond this world to the hereafter. This takes an incredible amount of faith to accept. But once it has been accepted, life becomes beautiful. Our mere existence will be cherished, but must not be worshipped. And we will become amongst the patient. I have discovered three points that helped me find answers and make sense of the question for myself. These being that no absolute evil exists in this world. The gift of free will, which Allah has bestowed upon us. The fact that this world is nothing but a test for mankind. And we must first establish that the idea of absolute evil does not exist. There is nothing in this world that is completely evil when considered in the bigger picture. Yes, an action can be evil and wrong, deviating from the way of Allah and causing pain beyond belief. But that action can do good as well. Most do little to no good in this world, but might do much in the hereafter or even later in time. Justice will be served either here or on the day of judgment. The act of killing, for example. As an isolated action, it is wrong, but once taken with context and a broader sense, we can see what good it might have. For example, the killing of a dictator, an oppressor who has caused suffering to others beyond belief, does much good later on. Or even the killing of an innocent person, say a victim of murder, yes, an absolutely horrific and unforgivable crime. But there still lies good in it. That murder gives a living to the police and detectives whose jobs are to fight crime. It feeds their family, sharpens their skills and abilities, enhancing their thinking and detective skills. Even though the good will never outweigh the bad, there still exists good. Another extreme example, the issue of Gaza. Though both sides are experiencing bad things, one side way more than the other, there still is good that is coming from it. The unifying of the people who get together and peacefully protest. The unifying of the Ummah. The realization and the light that is shining on the true suffering that is occurring in that region, as well as the development of the faith of the people around the world and especially within Palestine. Day by day, the people grow stronger in faith getting closer to Allah and the truth. There still exists a wisdom behind these atrocities. Now I'm not saying that these situations are not bad or horrific. Rather, I am simply making a point about the non-existence of absolute evil. Pushing a child over seems wrong and evil to most, but if you are pushing to save them from a car, then this becomes good. Therefore, an action may seem wrong and bad, but the outcome and the wisdom behind it will determine its true nature. Whether it is today, tomorrow, or in the hereafter, it will show in time. Therefore, we must accept, first of all, that absolute evil does not exist. However, pain and suffering do, and we must remember that not only is Allah all-loving and all-powerful, but also all-wise and all-knowing meaning that behind the pain and suffering we go through lays immense wisdom. The gift of free will sets humanity apart from most of Allah's creations, granting us the ability to choose our own paths, to discern between right and wrong, to opt for A or B. Yet, this privilege bears a weighty responsibility. When we falter in choosing the right path, it often leads to pain and suffering. Therefore, 
First, we must take responsibility for our actions as human beings before we throw judgment on him. We as a species allow so much wrong to occur and we commit so much wrong. We as a species are perhaps the most violent in this planet, destroying and slaughtering far beyond our own needs to only satisfy our greed. So understand that absolute evil does not exist and that we must begin to take responsibility for most of the pain caused in this world and to have free will in a world. There must be the choices of A or B, of right or wrong. Without this choice, we would resemble the angels, devoid of independent will, a status lower than ours, at least in certain aspects. This means that Allah does allow pain and suffering in this world as we do see it firsthand because he has granted us free will. But this is not because he is evil or lacks ability to stop the pain, but rather because he is Al-Hakim, the wise. He allows these events to go on even though it displeases him because he is Al-Alim, the all-knowing. He knows the wisdom behind this world and the events that occur. Though it might be hard for us to understand or to accept, we must try. Have faith because the wrongs that do occur will be righted either in this dunya or the hereafter. Justice will be served and the right doers will prevail. Do not let the world blind you from the greater truth. This life is a test, a challenge that demands your utmost effort to study and overcome. It presents countless questions, some immensely difficult and extreme. Each person faces trials to their capacity and will reap the rewards based on the size of these challenges. Similar to how rigorous and difficult exercise enhances your body's strength and efficiency, so does the exercise of your mind and soul. Strengthening your faith allows you to succeed in this test. It's a test crafted specifically for you, equipped with a guidebook, allowing discussion and forgiveness for mistakes, which are intended to educate for future parts of the examination. It is the most just of tests, the fairest of the examinations. So study, discuss, make errors and learn. Live with the aim to pass. There are many answers to why Allah allows the so-called evils of this world and why sometimes it seems like the wrongdoers are more successful and happier. Most of them are beyond our knowledge and comprehension and some we can see for ourselves. Therefore, we must have faith and accept that this world is not the end. There still exists the eternal hereafter, before which all our answers to the questions and problems presented to us in this dunya will be judged, fairly and justly, on the day of judgment. Expand your perspective to encompass both this world and the hereafter, and witness how the troubles of this world lose their sting. Acknowledge the limitations of our minds. Recognize that there's a depth of wisdom beyond our grasp. Assume responsibility for every action, regardless of its scale. Each decision demands the right choice. And if answers evade us, it's our duty to seek them. Allah is the all-knowing and the wise. He has much, much more wisdom and knowledge than our greatest thinkers beyond our comprehension. Allah is the most merciful and the forgiving. He knows what we truly feel deep down and if our intentions are pure and we seek forgiveness, he will answer. We will not be disappointed. Allah is the most powerful and the most kind. So have patience in his decrees and put the utmost effort into living a life of kindness, love and peace. Choose the right answers to the questions, have patience, Strengthen your faith and your character.